Good evening. This week we'll be looking at Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. And this is going to be done in two parts, mainly because verses 1 through 8 are addressing one point, and 9 through 11 are addressing the second. To start off with, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. This is a continuation of what we were discussing in the latter part of chapter 7 last week. That duality of flesh and spirit. The nature of the flesh, the nature of humankind, is sinful. There's that desire to do what fulfills, what feels good, regardless of what the consequences may be. And the example I gave was the desire to eat pizza. I really, really like pizza a lot. But because of gluten and because of actually nightshades, which would be the tomatoes, I can't eat it. It causes my skin to break open and I bleed. That's a pretty nasty thing. But I really, really, really want to eat pizza. The flesh has its desires. But the mind knows that what is good for it is not fulfilling those desires. And we see that here in chapter 8 in the beginning. Who do not walk according to the flesh. How do you walk? You make the choice. You choose where you're going to go. So not walking according to the flesh is making the choice not to follow the desires and fulfilling them. Then it says also, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. It's setting us free from the consequences. It doesn't set us free from the desires. We still have those desires. Paul himself is writing about the fact he still had those desires. So those that believe that once you become a Christian, you sin no more, They're going against what Paul is saying right here in Romans chapter 8. The next part, verses 9 through 11, is where it gets a little bit interesting. Beginning with verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he's not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Christ or raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. All right. This is where we don't fully understand and it's not necessary that we do fully understand it. God Because of his spirit, the spirit of Christ, dwelling in us, is willing to make a difference in our lives because of that. Because we choose to walk according to the spirit, God is going to make a difference. And the best analogy I can think of was when I was a coach for itty bitty kids. We're talking about three to five year olds. Now, for most people, when you think about coaching basketball or coaching soccer for three to five-year-olds, we called it cat herding. 
It's really hard to herd cats because cats don't really care about doing what they're supposed to do. And if you think about it, our nature is not to really care about what we're supposed to do. We want to do what we want to do. Three through five-year-olds want to do what they want to do. And basketball and soccer may or may not be the thing at that moment. And it was always interesting because sometimes they do what they wanted to do. And sometimes that was soccer or basketball. And sometimes it was something totally out in left field. The thing was, if those kids wanted to be playing basketball and they wanted to score, then me and the other coaches would make sure they had that opportunity. We'd pick the kid up, holding the ball, lift them up to the net so they could drop the ball through the net and score. Because we wanted them to be able to succeed. It wasn't about how well they could play the game, whether or not they could win. We didn't really keep track of score. It was about helping them to do what they wanted to do that was right relative to the sport. So if they wanted to score, we made sure they were going to score. If they didn't want to score, if they didn't want to be playing the game, we weren't going to force them to do it. We would encourage them. We'd give them every opportunity to do it. But in the end, we weren't going to force them to do what they had no desire to do. The same is true for God. He knows what's good for us. He knows what's going to benefit us both here and in the future. He gave us the law, as we talked about last week, for a benefit because it told us what we needed to know to live well, to stay safe. And he's seeking to make it a possibility for us to live well eternally. He sent his son. He made the way in the same way we used to make the way for those kids to score. Not because those kids had it in them to do it. Not because we have it in us to do it as far as eternally. God makes the way. And if God's Spirit is dwelling in us, He's going to make the way. He made it through His Son. Verse 11. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. The extent of what it means when it says, give life to your mortal bodies, that one I can't nail down for you. Give life through His Spirit who dwells in you, that one I can. And He's made it clear. If we are choosing to be His, He is our Master. If we are trying, if we are making the choices to strive against our nature, He's going to make it all possible for us. Have a great week.